Today we're going to look at a contactor. We're going to look at uh, what are common problems with the contactor, how to diagnose it, and how to replace it. So after you remove that panel, we're going to be looking at your contactor right here. Now some common things to look for on the contactor is pitting on these actual points. That's a common place for them to fail. It doesn't make the actual contact that it needs to, so we're not passing electricity through. So some easy ways to check that is while the actual unit is calling and you have power to this, and I do stress that you be very careful on this because you are with live power but when this contactor is pulling in you can simply take your voltmeter and you can actually check between the points and see what your what we call a voltage drop is you should not be getting any voltage when you read between this point and this point another common thing is in these points there's a good chance you can get ants so if you see any kind of ants build up around your unit definitely would do something about spraying that to keep those out of there. The other point that I always like to make is we do have 24 volts coming to this. So really this is just a switch. We have a 24 volt wires that come and actually call for this to come on. It pulls in this contact and that allows the power to go through to turn on your fan and your compressor. If this is not pulled in but you have power, always go and you can take a voltmeter and you can check between these two points or the actual coil side, the 24 volt side and you should have anywhere from 25 to 27 volts. If you're getting that, that contactor should be pulled in. If that's not coming in, there's a good chance there's a problem with the actual coil and that this would need to be replaced. Whenever we want to replace these, these are a little bit more difficult for most people. So you want to make sure that you're, you're highly skilled to start replacing these. These are actually the inlet wires that come from your disconnect. We actually call these the line voltage coming in. And then these wires on the top are actually your load voltage. So you want to make sure that when you're wiring up everything, you have all this wired up the way you were. And you want to make sure that on each leg, you're getting the correct wires. Pull these screws out. And then get your new contactor. And actually kind of pull this back. Line up those holes if you can. And put your screws back in. And then at this point, we can go wire for wire right onto the new contactor. One thing on these I always like to do, because some of these do come different, is I want to clip these actual wires and have some wire strippers and just strip them back. Then we want to just stick it in there and screw it back in. Definitely want to make sure everything's not going to come off and has a good snug fit. So next we can move on to the 24 volts. Now, if you can see this one, I'm pretty loose. Be very careful, but you can always pinch these to try to make a better connection. And that's going to hold it on there a lot tighter. So with that last tightening, we can just check, make sure everything's connected. And you can always refer to your wiring diagram to know that everything's wired upright. And that's how you change out a contactor. Now, I will say this contactor is really nice because... It does have this cover over it, and so it is protecting it a little bit better than that old one to keep some bigger bugs out. You can still get ants in there. One thing I would suggest is an actual sure switch. They actually last a lot longer. Um, their contactors are actually enclosed to where ants and all that can't get to them. A lot of guys call these ant-proof contactors, but they uh, really have a great, a great system. Um, but they are a little bit more complicated to replace. So as we can see, a, a contactor doesn't take long to replace, but you know, definitely knowing what you're doing and where the wire is going is gonna make it where it's an easier matchup. Any of that stuff that's wrong can cause your unit not to run. Definitely if that contactor's got any problems, you're gonna definitely see your compressor not run and your fan because it won't be sending power through. So anytime the unit's completely off, and that contactor is pulling in, check those points. And if it's not pulling in at all and you do have 24 volts, check that. That's not an end all be all. We could definitely find other problems with the unit after that. And that's why we always suggest having a professional look over your whole system. Mm -hmm.